Hello friends, welcome back. I should be saying welcome back to myself because it's been so long. And I know the last maybe, what, 25 videos, I've said the exact same thing. We're just gonna go with it. So today I wanna just do a fun, quick check-in video where I tell you what's been going on in the late summer, early fall, all of our advocacy stuff. Adam was at a conference with Jelly Roll. I spoke on a panel for re-entry about my experience as a prison wife on behalf of all of us, all of you, all of SPWF. What else did we have? Oh, I went to jail. I was gonna tell you that story because I think that's one that I promised a long time ago. So we'll start with that one and a couple of other things that we have going on. So the lighting in here is pretty atrocious, but I wanted to show you that most of this rack is now made up of Ana Luisa. Let's see. So we have this stack necklace from them, this necklace from them, this necklace from them. We have, let's see, this necklace is from them. I've been wearing this nonstop recently. I get so many compliments on it. Um, I showed you guys this one because it was part of their Take Me to the Beach collection. It's a locket. I showed you that in my video where I showed you my outfits for the beach. And then the new ones that I got are this beautiful, dainty herringbone necklace. I should put that on for the video. I will. I love this one. I've been wanting it forever to layer with one of these stacks. But what I love about this, look at this up close. It's a thin herringbone. You know how sometimes they're too fat and they look kind of masculine? And then number two is the detail on this necklace is beautiful. So it's dainty, it's herringbone, and it's like pretty herringbone. It doesn't look cheap. I don't like cheap looking herringbone. And then they also sent me over this beautiful, like that link necklace, paper clip, paper clip style necklace that looks very, very much like one of the designer inspired ones recently. I am obsessed with this and I cannot wait to wear that. I style that up with all my fall stuff. The last thing they sent over, which I also am in love with, is this bracelet. What's amazing about this bracelet is that it opens and it closes by itself and it stays on closed because I've had other bracelets from different brands like this is from Amazon. This falls off very often, especially lifting up a child. So that doesn't work. This isn't going to fall off because it clips on. But then I have this other one from Amazon that clips, but it doesn't clip all the way. Like th this is the Ana Luisa. It clips and then you have to press it to open it. You could do it by yourself. You don't need another person to get this on or off, which I can't stand. So this is perfect because I could do it myself. But this one just kind of clips and it opens and closes on your arms and it pinches your skin. And it, let me tell you how bad that hurts all the time. So I'm obsessed. You guys know me with all my bracelet stacks. What a mess it is up here. So I cannot wait to wear this stuff. This ring is from them. This ring is from them. Their stuff starts at... $39 goes up from there. So nice and affordable. You get free shipping throughout the United States. If you're not in the US, you get pretty fast and very affordable shipping. It's tarnish proof. It's humidity resistant. You're not going to have to worry about it. Oh my God, I love that. About it um, like going bad, turning you green, anything like that. However, because they're so reliable, they come with a two-year warranty. So you're set. So let's put this one on. That's pretty pretty but i think i like this herringbone one yeah i think i like this with this necklace stack that i got with them last time i have so many options now perfect i love this so if you guys are interested check out the link in the description box below i will put the discount code all the things so let me tell you about when i went to jail because i know i teased that a long time ago adam has had a unit at the women's on the women's floor women's floor no in a women, one of the women's units in the Clark County Detention Center, CCDC, for a couple of years. They call it the SOAR unit. Um, I don't remember what S-O-A-R stands for, but they did a graduation a couple months ago. Adam asked me to come with him, and I was like, of course. So you should see me the night before. I'm picking out what I want to wear. And he's like, you know you're going to have to speak, right? You're going to have to say something. And not only do I not love public speaking, I do it. I go out on a limb. I feel great afterwards, but I still get nervous beforehand. But I don't like public speaking where I have to go and like give a presentation unpracticed. Panels, all day long. I would rather be on a panel and ask questions that I have to answer versus giving a keynote. If somebody's like, hey, do me a favor and stand up and speak for seven minutes, Adam can get up off the top of his head, do a presentation like he's practiced professional politician for like, you know, his whole life. Me, not so much. It makes me extremely nervous. I get stuck in my head. I think about what I want to say, think like that's not going to work. And I'm like totally distracted, anxious, sweating. That's me. 
So now he's got me nervous and I'm like, I don't even know what you want me to talk about. And he, it's like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, things I don't even know about. So now I'm nervous in my head about that. Number one. Number two, former prison wife here. I don't know what I'm thinking, but I'm picking out like professional looking clothing. And he's like, uh, I don't know if that's going to work because of the sleeves. No sleeves. I don't know if that's going to work because of the color. I know you guys know what I'm talking about if you're a prison wife or a family member. But if not, let me remind you different facilities have different rules for visitors. And when you're going in for something like this, you're considered a visitor, right? So when Adam was inside, I could not wear a sleeveless shirt. I couldn't wear this, I couldn't wear these shorts. There's rules that I have to follow, a dress code that I have to follow or I can't get in. Actually, still to this day, one of my most watched videos was what you can wear to prison visit. I'll link it up there. It was a fun video to make. I literally went through the rules of the facility, besides the point. I don't know the rules of this jail because I have no reason to, I don't go to visit anybody. So now I'm trying to piece together like very, very professional outfit. At the same time, boys, shut your ears, girl problems, right? I just went on HRT and it was my first month using it. So it hadn't really kicked in all the way yet. And I'm going through that, like that whole Perry transition. I know so much fun. I'll keep you guys posted. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. But for this video, I had the heaviest, worst two days, and it was the night before and the day of. You guys understand what I'm trying to say, women, men, I'm so sorry, you might wanna check out here. It was bad. So I chose black dress pants for obvious reasons, a black button down long sleeve. You guys have seen me wear it a hundred times. It's like my go-to shirt, very professional that I've worn with short leggings as like a casual outfit. I've worn it to a wake, I've worn it to so many professional events, and here I am wearing it to jail. It's old faithful. I put that on with a pair of heels. We're running late. So we're like rushing, rushing, rushing. We told the babysitter the wrong time. So she's here just about at the time we have to be there. And it's 25 minutes away. We have like 10 minutes to get there. And he's like, by the way, like if we don't get in, there's, you guys know, like they're not going to hold it up for us. Like then we're not allowed in. So we got to hurry. So now he's making me nervous with that. Nervous about the, the girl issue going on because it's not like I can stop and go to the bathroom. I'm in jail. Not like I'm even going to try to bring in tampons or pads or anything because I'm in jail. And I'm in a housing unit, so like I don't even know what the rules are, and I don't really want to disrupt, disturb, and interrupt, disrupt their living area, right? Because like I feel like I'm going into somebody's house. I always try to be super respectful because it's their home, right? I don't want somebody to come into my home and like start messing around in my bathroom. You know, they have nothing. I think I'm so sensitive to this because while Adam was inside, I went to visit this jail with like a tour with a group. I was out here with an organization that was involved in re-entry. And one of the things at this event was touring this exact jail that I went to. So while we're there, Adam is still inside serving a life sentence. I think I'm on like a year, I don't know, 10, 11, no, 11 he got out. So like maybe like eight-ish. So believe me, I'm a very seasoned prison wife, prison visitor, and they take us in in this group. Now this is my very first time in a jail that's not in a visiting room. We get into the elevator and the man that's leading the tour goes, mm -hmm, yep, smells like jail, former inmate. So I'm like, what does that even mean? For all those years after that stood in my head because you always hear jail smells disgusting, that smells like jail. And I smelled sometimes the inside of the cardboard boxes when Adam would send me stuff home when he was inside. And like they did have like a musty funky smell, but it's also the inside of a cardboard box. Like who knows how long that was sitting in the mailroom, who knows what it was used for before this, right? So like, yes and no. So still on this first tour back in like, let's just say 2016 to make this easy for you guys to understand. Walk us through this hallway and then they open these doors. It's like this little tiny little vestibule area. It's not exactly a room and a big window. And you look through this window and it looks down onto like the day room for the inmates. They're all in there doing their thing, playing games, watching TV, sitting at tables. And the people that I'm with, I literally felt like I was at a zoo looking at animals in their very unnatural habitat. All I could think to do is I'm fading back tears at this point because that could be my husband down. That is my husband down there, right? He's just at a different facility, but this happens all the time. There's tours in there. And I'm like, we are literally looking at them like they are animals at a zoo. And all I could do was just smile at them, right? I'm getting like teary just thinking about this because these are people. I understand they did something wrong. All of them might not be good people. Some of them might be good people who made bad decisions. I would say that's most of them. And then some of them are really bad people that also made really bad decisions. Either way, they're not hurting me. They're far enough away from me that they can't get to, like it's not like I'm like dealing with a really bad person. You guys know what I'm trying to say, but all I could think to do is smile and fight back tears because I'm like, that's my husband. You guys understand what I'm saying. So that was that tour of the jail back then. And I remember like on the way out, I started talking to this 
sweetest cop who I'm from a town over from where she grew up in New Jersey. So we were talking about that and she had been out on one of the um, events that Adam had thrown, thrown at McKean when he was inside, she had been there. So she met him and she was like, oh my God, he's amazing. He has to get out. Like my gut, he's gonna get out. Like she was so, I loved her. Like practically in tears of how amazing Adam is and she's finally getting to meet his wife that he talked about. It was a very pleasant experience, interaction with the staff there then, as it was this time, but it left a sad, bad taste in my mouth. Now back on this tour, now we're getting there late. Adam's like, oh my God, we're gonna get there in time. And I hand him my license to get in, right? You need ID to get in. That's it, I didn't bring anything else in. I just didn't wanna have to deal with any of that. I am a nervous wreck, like I said, one, speaking, two, feminine girl problems. So we get to the front. Hi, booby, come here, come here, boob. Hi. You wanna stay here while I talk to our friends? Yeah, okay. So I go to walk through security and I'm like, I don't know what to do during Adam, during the, like, I, I, I was just so nervous. And I think some of it was back to, I don't wanna say PTSD, I don't wanna throw around that term because it's not like that dramatic, but there was a lot of stress and anxiety and you know, just, I don't, I guess there is a trauma response maybe, like a, I don't know, like a maybe minimal trauma response. I just don't wanna disrespect anyone that's been through life's hardcore traumas, like been a victim of a horrific crime, right? That is not what I'm talking about. But still, it was a little bit you know, anxiety reducing, producing and traumatic to drive six hours, spend half your paycheck to go to visit and then get turned, potentially get turned away. So anytime I went to visit for all of the 11 years that I was visiting Adam while he was in prison, until I got through that metal detector and I knew I was cleared, my outfit was okay, everything was good, they weren't turning me away that day, then I could breathe. But until then, the minute I woke up until that minute, which was like four hours, was sheer anxiety. I felt that again. It came back because this is the very first time I'm going through this since I have been a visitor visiting my husband in prison four years ago. Of course, I'm sending off the metal detector because they told me not to take off my jewelry. It was fine, but I'm like looking back, like, what do I do? Do I go back through? Because that wouldn't fly. If I set off the metal detector, I would have to go back through. And if I couldn't figure out what was setting off the metal detector, then I could leave. I wasn't allowed in. So the, this is all, you know, what's going on. Now the cops trying to have a conversation with me. Adam's trying to introduce me to people and I'm just an anxious mess. So we get into Adam's housing unit with the women that are gonna graduate and there's probably like 50 girls, uh, women who, inmates, and they have all these chairs set up because they're doing graduation, like a little podium, but this is their housing unit, right? So you walk in and all of their beds and their beddings are to your right you know, like the, the big area. I don't know if this is where they do like their classes, kind of like, it looks like kind of like picnic table sort of set up. I guess that's where they eat because everything happens in this, it's not prison. Everything happens on this unit. They don't go outside. They don't move to different areas of the gym. You live on your unit and you're there. They have like a row of chairs set up in the very front for the visitors right by the podium. And I can tell you when I walked in, because like I said, my last visit where the guy said, it smells like jail. Now remember it's July in Las Vegas, it's hot. It's sweaty. It's 115 degrees out. Yes, they have air conditioning in there, I believe. I wasn't uncomfortable. I don't remember being like hot, but it still smelled to me like dirt, like dirty, sweaty sheets and like dirty hair. We're in a woman's unit. My hair smells dirty very frequently. I don't wash it every single day. So I understand what's going on there. They're not washing their sheets every day, I don't think. But it wasn't like this horrible off-putting, I'm gonna throw up smell. It's also a women's unit. It's not a, man, a men's facility. As far as I'm concerned, the smell that I smelled, that was, I wouldn't say overpowering, but it was enough. Like when you were by their bedding was just like sweaty sheets and dirty hair, that's it. And the women were amazing. You could tell ones that have had a very, very, very tough life. They each came up and said a couple of things. A couple of people from staff said a couple of things. They were so supportive of one another. It was beautiful. It was absolutely an amazing event. Adam got up and spoke and it was so cute because the minute they announced Adam, it was like an eruption of cheers. They love him. How could you not? First of all, he's just like such a charismatic, endearing person. But second of all, like his story is nothing short of hope 
inspiration. If he could do it, then I have no excuse type of a story. So, and he's gotten very vulnerable, very professional, but like very open with them about his struggles, his story, what he's having to overcome, how he has the mindset that he has now. And like, basically if I can do it, what's your excuse? not in those words they love him love him so he got up and spoke he pointed me out another like over the crowd goes oh because when i first walk in they're like is that your wife is that your wife because he's told them about uh, me since and our story since day one one minor regret 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 i was all more fun for a half a second was that at the end they asked if anybody else would like to come up and say a couple of words and i should have taken the opportunity to do it and i was rehearsing in my head what i would have said if you guys want, I'll tell you what I would have said real quick. But at the same time, all the girls started chanting the man who's like the head of the, I guess like the sheriff's house. I don't know what he does, but he's like the head head of their unit, like above the cops that work on the daily. It's a really nice man who was sitting next to me. Yeah, blue, go ahead, color. But they started chanting his name. So what am I going to do? Be like, and he didn't get up and say anything. I don't think he thought it was appropriate, but I, what was I going to be like? Oh no, your unit, but I got this. You know, I, it wasn't appropriate at that point. But there was a, a woman with a beautiful voice and they sang Mariah Carey's hero. One of the girls came up and said something along the lines of like, you guys don't even understand what it means to somebody like us to say, for you guys to say good morning, to acknowledge us like people, right? I was going to say something about how Adam when he first got to McKean, had this lifer friend who was his mentor years before. Still one of his closest friends were working so hard. He's a lifer, but like he's, his time is, he's an old law inmate. So like he should have been out years ago. We'll get into that another time. We've talked about Uncle Kev on our pod. I call him Uncle Kev for CJ on our podcast plenty of times. But he used to say to him, good morning. When he first moved to McKean after they had been separated for like eight or nine years, he's a lot of the reason Adam went on the right path. He got him into health and fitness and away from like drugs and alcohol and bad stuff. So he says to him after all these years, like, good morning. And he'd be like, good morning. We're in prison. What's so good about it? And he worked him and he worked him and he worked him. And a couple months later, he got him to say good morning and like engage in a happy way. I was going to spin that story into it. And then the line in the hero song. It's a long road. If you face the world alone, blah, blah, blah. I was going to work that into it, but I didn't get my opportunity to because not appropriate with that guy there, but it was a beautiful ceremony. Those women are, you know, they're getting released soon. They're, they're in jail revolving door. I'm sure it's not, I'm sure I know it's not easy in there, but that was amazing. So that was my experience in jail left and somebody stopped us on the street talking to us. And they were like, you guys are like, he's like a politician and you're like a politician's wife. And I do not take that as an insult. I take that as the highest form of flattery and a compliment. I don't want to be a politician ever but it was very sweet. Adam also, I would say three or four weeks ago, went to an event, a re-entry event. Jelly Roll was the key speaker, keynote speaker, and he was supposed to get to meet him. And the reason that's so special to us, although Jelly Roll has like the greatest story and, you know, comeback story and he's doing great things, speaking on the fentanyl crisis in front of Congress. But on a selfish level, CJ is obsessed with Jelly Roll. Literally knows every word to save me. Hey, CJ, yeah. sing save me. He's going He's being shy. Can you sing Save Me? As much as we love Jolly Roll, I kind of had to start giving him different options of music because despite him not understanding what the words mean, he knows the words, every literally every single word of the song, and he repeats it. He sings it all the time that I don't want those words to get trapped in his subconscious because, you know, it's about somebody who's very depressed, who's been through really tough things in their life. I don't know if that gets caught up in a three-year-old subconscious or not, you know? So we started doing like I'm Unstoppable by the score. We started doing whatever it takes because that was Adam's theme song when he was inside. I'll do whatever it takes, you know, to rise to the top. And now he's loving those two. Back to the story. Adam's like, be ready because... I'm going to FaceTime you when I get FaceTime with him so CJ can meet him. Meanwhile, I have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with my boss at 11, okay? He lets me know at 1045, be ready. Starting at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock that morning, I have my cousin on the phone. I have my sister on the phone trying to figure out how to screen record a FaceTime with audio. Anybody know? Because you could screen record the video, but there's no way to screen record the audio. We're like Googling. It says to do all these things in your settings. We're practicing back and forth. She's recording. I'm recording. It's not working. So I had him set up so he could FaceTime on my iPad and I can record him on my phone. Now this is 1045. 11 o'clock comes and I just, I am my boss. I'm like, I'm going to be late. You know, I'm waiting for a call. 15 minutes later, Adam texts me like, it's not gonna happen. So heartbroken, I get CJ settled, told my boss I'm ready. 
And she's like, was it a client call or no? And I was like, no. She's like, no, that's okay. And I explained, I'm like, do you know who Jelly Roll is? And she's like, oh my God, yeah. So I explained to her what happened. She was like, oh man. So no Jelly Roll that day but lots of great stuff at the conference. Adam was able to speak. He was able to share his story, explain to, and I think these were like prison directors and those types of people. So, you know, sharing his story to people who make the rules, enforce the rules is so helpful to help them see a compassionate, get in touch with their compassionate side, see a success story, see how he was treated by positive people on the inside and how that impacted not only his incarceration, but how he could coach and support the men around him that were incarcerated with him. And every single one of them has gotten out and not one of them has reoffended. They're all actually very successful. So it helps them see that and it helps them, again, get in touch with their compassionate side, bring what Adam talks about to their facilities. He came home and maybe like two days later, like barely unpacked, we were on a plane to Wisconsin. There was a re-entry event where I was asked to be a panel speaker and to talk about the struggles that we go through as the outside half of an incarcerated couple when re-entry happens. And also like when it when you're going through it, that was amazing. I wasn't nervous up until, cause it's a panel, so I don't have to like prepare a speech. They just asked me questions and I answer them. And they gave me two of like the three or four questions beforehand. It's just that the other questions came up during, like just naturally, but that's fine with me. But this is what I've done for so many years. It's like a conversation with a friend. I felt slightly off that day. I was tired, we flew the whole day before. It actually worked out perfectly because the conference was 45 minutes from Adam's mother. So CJ stayed with grandma all day. They had like a grandma grandson day, so much fun. And it was perfect because we could bring him. We didn't have to get a babysitter, you know, like we didn't have to try to bring him to a conference. That wouldn't have worked. Adam said like, you did an excellent job. I'm like, I just felt off. Like I didn't feel the greatest. He's like, no, he's like, you were the most professional. Basically, I think that stepping stone that we're ready to speak together because there were a couple people at the conference he did a few days before the Jelly Roll one that wanted him and I to speak together about our story at their facilities down. And I think this confirmed for him that like, cause he's never seen me speak in public before that I can, aside from like our podcast, but that's a little different. And when I did watch it back, I was like, okay, whew. it came out of my mouth sounding better than what it sounded like in my brain and then translating out of my mouth, if that makes sense. And there was even one point that they asked me two questions in one and I answered the first question. Then he asked the second question and I was getting tired at this point because we're like 90 minutes in. I said, okay, there's two parts to that answer. I answered the first part and then I forgot the second part. And I said to him, I'm like, I'm sorry. If I remember it, I'll interrupt you and I'll let you know. Like, he's like, you played it off great, but it was a better, like that was, that was my home run response. I forgot it. So my takeaway from that is I will never not do one of those without paper and pen there with me so that I could like, okay, you want to talk about this part one and part two. So I could just glance down, could use your notes. I've seen people do that all the time and I'm very impressed. So that was that event. Then last week, Adam was away again for work. Joe, one of my best friends from Strong Prison Lives and Families is doing a project with Melinda, two admin from Strong Prison Lives and Families. They're just interviewing us about re-entry stuff, about people's relationships, asking really, really good questions. You guys want that video? Because I felt like back when I did that video, I'm like, this is what I've done with YouTube, with SPWF, Strong Prison Lives and Families, for all the years until Adam came home and then I kind of got, kind of, I got very distracted with CJ, with life and also, I didn't realize until, until I did, that there's a lot of unresolved, unrealized trauma for prison wives during reentry because majority of the work, the things that people talk about is the trauma that inmates experience when they're inside that carries with them through reentry. And of course, like I would never take that away from them because I don't, will never know. And I don't ever want to know that trauma that they experience on the inside. But that's not to say that we don't either because the ups and the downs and the having to like shield them from so many things and being their voice on the outside and the door slammed in your face and the um, ostrac, I almost said ostra, ostracization. <laughs> What does that mean? Being ostracized, not being able to share, trying to share, having awful things said to your face, having family disown you. I mean, the list goes on, not to mention feeling the absolute loss of them, holidays, parties, birthdays, you name it. So there's a lot that we don't realize and I needed to step away for a little bit and I didn't realize 
until after the fact. So we talked a lot about that. We talked a lot about the issues with reentry, a lot about like how to make your relationship thrive now that you're a couple on the outside. So uh, if you guys want me to put that video on the YouTube channel, just let me know, we'll do that. But other than that, the Adam has another one coming up in North Carolina in a couple weeks. And then we have a huge coming one coming up together where Adam's keynoting and I'm gonna be on a panel in January. So of course I'm already planning my outfit because why wouldn't I be? <laughs> Come say goodbye to our friends. Bye. 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 He's working very hard. Don't forget to check out Anna Luisa in the description box below. I'm telling you, I love their stuff. They're so affordable. They're so amazing to work with. Their stuff is beautiful, dainty. It lasts. And I've had no issues with them so far. So all the links and information is in the description box below. With that, I'm going to peace out of here. I love you guys.